Hello and welcome to the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Satisfactory. In this series, I'll teach you the mechanics of the game and discuss how to plan your factories and layouts, along with giving you overall tips and tricks I wish I knew before starting off playing Satisfactory. I plan to make this series a complete playthrough of the game where each episode will be done in a way where they can be digested individually for those who are just looking for specific help at certain phases of their current playthrough. I'll be uploading my save file along with any blueprints I create after each episode on my Patreon, but I do plan on taking it slow and show you how to build everything from scratch, so feel free to build along with me if you'd like to. So if you're excited about this series, do me a huge favor, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes in the series. When you start a new game, you'll see four starter locations that you can pick at the start of your game. It's important to note that Satisfactory is only one big map and these represent different starter locations or biome on the same map map now from left to right they tend to be more beginner friendly to more advanced but they all have pros and cons just because this is more beginner friendly does not make it the best starter biome in this series we are going to be starting in the rocky desert biome and the reason for that is it is in my opinion the most beginner friendly biome and yes i do mean over the grass fields Mainly because the grass fields is very hard to expand. Whereas the rocky desert has a lot of resources. It has a lot of open spaces to build. And the expansion into mid game is a lot easier to do. And honestly, I made a poll before as to which one you wanted to see me start for this series. And the rocky desert had the lowest votes and I feel bad for it. So I'm here making a change, showing you guys that Rocky Desert is actually a really good place to start. So we're going to give it some love here on YouTube. <laughs> so we're going to call this the beginner series. We are going to skip the intro and we're not going to enable any advanced game settings in this playthrough. But what this is, is a brand new update eight feature that you can enable. What this allows you to do is set some sort of like cheats, if you will, where you don't need power for your buildings or even enable flight mode. In progression, you can unlock all research in the MAM or even all the items that are in the awesome shop. And if you're afraid of spiders, you can go in creatures and disable all the arachnid creatures. Now in this playthrough, we're not gonna enable any advanced game settings, but I just wanted to show you that they are there for those who want them. So here we'll just start the game. Now you might not spawn exactly where I did if you're following along, but what we can do to orient yourself is look towards the south where the rock cliffs are. And we want to be heading west and north of these rock cliffs and towards the west. And there you'll find actually a cluster of iron ore. Be right here towards the west so we're gonna start heading that way now on the way to that location you want to just grab everything that you can when it comes to leaves and wood and things like berries you don't have to press e on every single one of these leaves by the way you just have to hover over one of them and press and hold e and then the next time you hover over a patch it'll just automatically grab them so we're going to head towards that location, pressing V once in a while just to rescan for the ore while grabbing all the leaves that we can. Another thing you can use to orient yourself to is you'll be looking for this big pillar over here that is pretty much alone. And that's where we are going to want to go is right next to it. If you come across like I did here to some power slugs on the ground, just grab them if you can. You'll have to most likely defend yourself. So you'll want to equip the Xeno Basher and then just go ahead and get rid of these uh, creatures that are in your way. Perfect. So we'll grab those plasma spitter remains and we'll grab our power slug. Now you can holster a weapon as of update 7 by pressing H so you don't have to always look at it. 
We're going to keep going now towards that location. And right underneath it, you'll notice that we have three iron nodes. This is where we want to be. You can see here that we've got quite a large building area and that'll be really good for us. All right, the first thing you'll want to do when you get to your location is plop down your hub. Now, you don't want to place it out in the open here where you're going to build all your machines. You want to actually tuck it away so it's not in the way. So we're going to grab the hub. In our case, what I like to do on in this spawn is just rotate it this way and we'll put it like this. I usually put the biomass burners facing towards the north so that I can expand the biomass burners in this little area right here. So they're not taking any of the building spaces in the front over here. Let's have a look at the hub real quick. In the hub, you have this thing called the terminal that you can go and select specific milestones. Now, these milestones, once you feed the items required, you can unlock these rewards. Now, typically, I would say you would want to just go from left to right and from tiers one, two, three, like that. But at the beginning, we really need logistics to ramp up our production. So we'll actually choose that as our first milestone and it'll add it at the top right for us to remember what we need for that milestone. The next thing we want to do here is actually just convert all the leaves and wood we've picked up on the way to our location. Now, you don't have to press and hold down this button. You can just actually just tap and release the space bar and it'll just craft everything that is available until it runs out automatically you don't even have to hold that space bar once you're done crafting the biomass we can head towards the back to the biomass burners and we'll add a stack into each one of these then we'll just connect them together to a power pole right here and from this power pole we'll create another power pole just as a buffer now the game has something called a to-do list if you open up your inventory and you go to the right here you can click here and you'll open up the to-do list the to-do list is a way that you can just write whatever you want just to keep track of things you might have to do later on so if you're in the middle of building something and you remember oh yeah i also have to do that just add it to your to-do list and at least then you'll remember what you need and there are specific ways that you can format your te text so in our case here we'll just add a b tag and just call our list to do we'll close our tag and then we'll put these square brackets to make a list and there you go so now we have to automate our first items so we'll head over to our iron ore over here we'll remove the chunk that's on top of the ore Perfect. So now that we have the chunk off, we can then proceed to add a miner. So we'll add a miner. We'll make it so that it's facing this way. And then we'll give it power by adding a power line. We'll drop the pole for this power line right here. And then we'll connect it back to our base is uh, biomass burners over here and now our miner has power and it's starting to produce some iron ore the next thing we need is to then smelt that iron ore so we're going to grab the smelter now you could just go ahead and place this wherever you want and then belt into it and that's totally fine but i like to keep things clean and use the control button as much as possible so if i hold control here You'll see that it kind of like snaps to the same line as the miner. So here we can snap to the miner and just bring it forward a little bit. And the reason we bring it forward is to leave enough space here so that later on we can add a nice splitter and add more furnaces or smelters. So now the ore is going into the smelter. We need to set the recipe for the smelter to be doing iron ingots. And we also need to give it power. So we'll bring another pole nearby here. And then we're going to connect it to the smelter. 
And now the smelter is working, we are now producing iron ingots. From those ingots, we then need to construct our iron plates. So again, we'll hold control and we'll bring it forward. Now this, we don't need to bring up forward too much because we don't need to add a splitter to it. And then we'll give it power. We'll go to the constructor and we'll set it to be doing some iron plates. And now you can see we're starting to do some iron plates. And from the constructor over here, all we have to do now is add those plates into storage. Now we'll leave a little bit of room here because we'll add a merger later on. And then we'll just belt into the storage container here. And just like that, we've automated our first items, the iron plates. Perfect. So now next we need another iron node here to be exposed so that we can do some iron rods. So in order to do that, we need to get rid of this fly spawner. Now to get rid of these, uh, the best thing to do here is just go ahead and just go straight and kill it. Because if you try to b fight those flies, you'll probably just take more damage and they'll just keep spawning and spawning and spawning. So you might as well just go straight and destroy the spawner first. So we'll do the exact same thing on this back node over here. Now, to speed up building process, there's a few neat little tricks you can do. So instead of opening up your builder menu and grabbing the miner again, there's a couple other ways you can do it. You can either press N and search for it and then grab it this way. Or you can, if there's already one that is built, you can just hover over it, middle mouse click. It'll actually copy the building. And that way, it makes things a lot easier and you'll be doing this a lot. So we'll plop this one down. And I'm gonna actually line up a smelter this time so that it lines up with both the miner and the other smelter. And we could do that by holding control and lining up those green lines. Then we'll add a big pelt to this smelter right here. And now, You'll notice that when we copied this building, it didn't copy the recipe. To copy the recipe, you then need to hover over a previous building that has a recipe set and hit Control C and you'll see that it says settings copied. Then you can just hover over the next building and hit Control V and it'll say settings pasted and you'll see here the recipe has been transferred. Now what we need to do is give power to both these buildings. So we'll bring another pole here. We'll attach it to the miner. And then we'll bring another pole all the way here and attach it to this smelter. Now we have to start looking into our power. We need to always keep an eye on our power. You can see that by either pressing E on a power pole or on a biomass burner or anything producing power. And you can see here that our capacity is at 40 and our max consumption is at 22. So if everything was turned on at all times, it would be hitting 22 megawatts of power. But right now it keeps fluctuating because the miners are turning on and then they're turning off because they're actually producing too many iron ore. So we're still good for capacity right now. So we don't have to worry about it just yet, but after a few more buildings, we'll have to expand our power. So we'll grab our constructor over here. And again, we'll hold control and we'll line up with both of these. Now, sometimes it can be tricky and you won't be able to do it if you hold control. But if you can, I like to use it as much as possible. And from here, we can add another power line to this constructor and set this one to be doing iron rods. And from the iron rod constructor, again, we're gonna add another storage container. We'll line everything up and then we'll add a belt and just like that we've now finished our second automation so now that's pretty much all we need right now for the iron products there's still the screws to be made but before we do the screws we're just gonna go ahead and make concrete and some wires now anytime you move between buildings or 
different production chains, always grab the leaves that you have on the way. So that way you don't have to go and do an actual run of leaves picking up. You just, you're always picking them up. So you're not worrying about it. We're getting pretty low on the actual wire items. So what we can do here is probably start with the copper. To do that though, we'll need to get rid of this fly spawner. All right, so now we'll tackle the copper ore. We'll add a miner on top here. So we should be okay like this. Bring power from these poles over to this side and give power to the miner. And then we'll add a smelter holding that control button. belt into it and set this one to do copper ingots this time and we'll give it power then we'll do a constructor we'll line it up uh, see we're kind of like over the tree so we're we're gonna go a little bit forward here I like to keep it real now that's just a, a requirement of me I don't like clipping but you know you do what you want this is your game you can do whatever it is that makes you happy for me though i like to make it as real as possible now for the constructor here we're going to set it to do some wires all we have to do now is add a storage container ah we ran out of plates so we'll just go take two seconds to run back here. We'll grab all the items that we've already crafted. All right, now we belt into here and there you go. Now we've got our wires done. Perfect. So now it's time to keep an eye on our power because now, as you can see, we should be exactly at capacity. Well, 39 max consumption and our capacity is 40. So. What we need to do now is actually add some biomass burners. So to do that, we'll grab a biomass burner. Now the biomass burner, you'll notice that it requires some wire. So thankfully we've already crafted that. We've already set up that automation. So we're just gonna go ahead here. We'll want to craft about two biomass burners. So we'll need around 50 of these. We'll probably want a little bit more than 50 because it requires some of this for the poles. All right. So now we should be able to go and set those up. Clean up the area a little bit here. Plus, we're going to need to craft more biomass in just a couple of minutes here. So now we can put down two biomass burners so the way i do that is for now i like to just place them we're gonna clear this mushroom type plant and then we'll place them like this Then we'll add a new power, power pole in front here, and then we'll just add these two biomass burners to this power pole. What we need to do now is just convert all the leaves and wood to get more biomass, and then we'll fill all four of those biomass burners with biomass. There should still be quite a bit of biomass in these guys, so it's not a problem just yet. We'll actually just add a stack into each one of the new ones. And then these old ones should still be good. All right, before we go and do the concrete now, we're just going to go into our storage and drop everything we don't really need right now. Perfect. Now, for the concrete we're gonna need a miner we're also going to need one constructor and a storage container now the reason i'm doing this is again to prepare myself and see okay are we gonna be okay 
And you can see here that we're missing some cables. So we'll have to craft cables. Now cables we'll have to craft more of because each power line takes cables. So we'll grab some of these wires that are already done. We'll head back into our hub here and we'll just go ahead and craft some cables. We'll craft about uh, oof, 30, yeah, like this many, almost 40 of them. All right, so now that we've done the crafting here, we can head out towards our limestone area. It's actually in the back here towards the north. It's not that far off, but we'll want to make sure that we actually bring a power line with us. So we'll bring one over here and we'll just bring it with us all the way to the limestone node. sure to grab all the leaves on the way yes i'm gonna say it every single time just so you remember <laughs> and i remember and then we're gonna go and destroy this fly spawner so the limestone is the same way we have to remove this chunk on top now if you don't remove the chunk you won't be able to place down the miner then we'll go ahead and place down a miner we'll give it some power And for this, we'll just add a constructor somewhere over here. So we'll add one. Th these are fairly temporary. We will move this constructor later. So we'll just belt into this. We'll give it some power and set this to be doing some concrete. And then we'll place down a storage container. We're going to try to put it as close to our base as we can. Maybe somewhere over here. And we'll just belt... We'll belt into that container. There you go. And just like this, we've actually just completed one of our to-do lists. We've completed the basic concrete. That's all we really need for now, and that's all we can do for now, actually. Now we'll want to unlock the logistics before we do anything else. So we're gonna go and grab all the items that we've built so far, and hope we have enough to send it to the logistics milestone. We're gonna grab the ingots that are already done out of the constructor and the smelter here to make this process go faster. So. Then we could just craft the rest of the wires that we need for the milestone. We're just going to craft a little bit extra because you always need some wires. We're going to go till about 350 or so. And then we're going to go to our terminal and send off this milestone. Now we can already set up for the next milestone, which is going to be base building in our case. And that way we can start at least putting down foundations so that we can get cleaner factories. Now that we have logistics, we actually need some things more than others at the beginning. And one of these things is actually the limestone here, the concrete, I mean. The concrete, we are going to need a ton of, especially if we want to do some foundations. So what we can do here is for now, just upgrade this production line and add another constructor but for that i want to redo my bar here and i want to put down one of about every single different categories that i'm going to use just like this now the reason you want to only put one is because in the case of let's say the splitter you could just select that in your hot bar and you can just go between the other items in that subcategory by pressing E. Now you could also hold E and then you'll see all the different options in that subcategory. So right now it might not seem very useful, but later on, especially like you have five different belts, you have five different lifts and so on and so forth. It could be very useful. So we'll plop down a craft bench and we'll go ahead and craft some screws. We'll need enough screws here to craft two reinforced iron plates. So we'll do that. And then we'll place down 
a constructor right next to that one. Again, by holding control to make it nice and clean. And from here, we can add a splitter on the existing conveyor line. And we'll then go into the constructor. Now, you could go straight into here and that's fine. I just like to keep things as clean as I can. So I try to do 90 degrees as best as I can. It's harder to do without foundations, but I, I still do the habit. It's a habit that I've had and I can't shake it off. We'll place a merger here and then align into the merger. All right, so now that we're crafting more of these concretes, we can now move on to do the extra iron items that we need. First, we'll just empty our inventory of the things we don't need right now. And we'll keep an eye on our power. Our power is still good, so we don't have to worry about that just yet. And let's use our to-do list here in order to see what we need going forward. So for the iron production, we are going to double up on the iron plates. So for that, we'll need one more smelter and a constructor. And then we'll also need to add the screws. So for the screws, we're going to need two more constructors, one for iron rods and one for the screws themselves and then we'll just add a couple splitters a couple mergers and we'll need some belts here and you can see here that we need to craft a couple items first we'll go and pick up the extra wires that are built we're going to go back to our hub and we'll start crafting the cables now cables, you always need more than what it says here because of the power lines. So we're gonna go up to 100. And that way we don't have to worry about it for a little bit. Perfect, now we'll do some screws until we can craft six reinforced iron plates. The problem though is we're gonna run out of iron rods. So we'll go grab both the iron plates and iron rods that we have already crafted. And then we could continue with the screws. So we're gonna go up until we have six of these. Perfect. And now we'll craft the six reinforced iron plates. We don't really need anything else here, so we're good to go. So now we just have to head on over to our production over here. The first thing we want to do is double up on the iron plates. We're going to need a lot of iron plates. So it's best to work your way back because what takes the most room is the constructor here. So we're going to hold control, add another constructor. We're going to copy paste the recipe for the iron plates. And then we'll add another smelter. We're gonna try and line it up with both the constructor and the smelter. Something around here. We'll add a belt. And we'll add a splitter here. And then we'll try our best at 90 degree angles. It's not, uh, it's not great. <laughs> But now you'll see that we've been doing 60 iron ore and each one of the smelters does 30. And then each one of these constructor plate takes 30. So this, this we're, we're using 100% of the items we're producing with this miner. So this whole production chain of the iron plates will be fully efficient. But first we need to give power, so we'll bring power this way and we'll add both machines then the only thing we'll need to do is add a merger on this line and belt into it and there you go that's it now we're done we just doubled our iron plate production so now we're doing a total of 40 per minute 
Next up is the rods. We're going to grab a constructor. We're going to double that up too. And then we're going to put a constructor in front of this one. Right about here. Oops. Then we'll belt into it. And then we'll add another storage like this. Now for this one, we don't need to add another smelter because iron rods only take 15 ingots per minute. And this produces 30 per minute. So what we'll want to do here is just add a splitter. And then we'll go into this constructor. And we'll set it to be doing some iron rods and this one to be doing screws. And the last thing we need to do here is add power to both of these machines. And there you go. Now we're actually producing screws. Now, we don't have to worry too much here, but we're producing 15 iron rods per minute here, and we're only using 10. Now there is efficiency we could do here, and we could split this line and then merge it back together and then only use 10 rods and then we'll send the extra five into the rod storage but honestly this whole setup is temporary once we have all the stuff necessary that we need we're actually going to be rebuilding this into our starter factory if you will so i'm not going to worry too much about it just yet and just like that we are now done with our iron production Now it's time to keep an eye on our power real quick. So let's go and do that. We still got capacity. And if we look at these, we still got biomass. So we're good to go for a little bit more. So now we need to concentrate on expanding our copper here in order to be able to craft some cables. So again, for that, we're going to go in here. We actually need a total of four more constructors this time. So now we need eight reinforced iron plates. So we're going to craft screws until we have eight reinforced iron plates. And then we'll be crafting those. Now we can start expanding. So for that, we need to add actually a total of three more constructors right here. And then on the third one from the right, we're gonna add another smelter and we're gonna line it up with the that constructor and the smelter. We're also going to have to go and get rid of this fly spawner. Okay, perfect. All right, so now we add a splitter from the minor line here, and then we'll bring this back into this smelter here. From this smelter, we're going to belt into that third constructor. And from each one of the smelter lines here, we're going to add a splitter. And each one of these will go into the other constructor that it's next to. Like so. We'll have to uh, give power. Now, if you're running out of spot on the pole over here, what you could do is copy the pole and 
actually hover over an existing line. And if you left click on that line, let's say, you'll be able to move that line to go through your new pole just like this. And you can see now that existing line has moved through the new pole and then back to the smelter where it was going. And from here, we can then give power to this smelter and then bring another power line pole here and then go and add power to both of those constructors. Here we can add the power to this one and we'll copy the wire recipe and we'll just add it to every single one of these constructors. So now we should have a total of four constructors doing wires. Now there's a rock in the way here. Hopefully this won't cause a problem. But what we'll want to do on the first constructor line of the wires here is just add a merger. Now you could clip through the rock. I don't really care for that. So I'm going to just try to carefully... go over the rock just like that so now we have 60 total wires per minute going into this storage container we want to pretty much reproduce the exact same thing but instead of a storage container we're going to go in a constructor so we're going to add a constructor over here we're going to line it up with the third constructor that was over here will belt into it then we'll give it power add the power to this back pole here and this one will set it to do cables now we'll have to add a merger on this line and belt into that merger now what you could do to try to make those 90 degree belts a little bit easier depending on where you're at you could just use your middle mouse scroll to rotate the belt here. And there you go. So now we have 60 wires going into here, which is what it requires. And then it'll produce 30 cables per minute. Then all we have to do here is just add a storage and we'll belt into there. And finally, we've now crafted the automation for the cables and just like that we've now finished our basic copper production to-do list now just like that we have everything that we technically need in order to move on to bigger things but we need to unlock the other milestones first and we're gonna do that right now we're also going to go and keep an eye on our power because we've added a lot of machines here. So most likely we're getting pretty close to capping on our power. We still have a little bit of room here, 12 megawatts of power. But before we do anything else that requires power, we'll have to expand. So we'll most likely add two more biomass burners. So what we can do here while we're waiting for things to fill up, is convert all the leaves and wood that we've got so far. And we'll go ahead and top up our current biomass burners. Now we'll go back and grab all the materials that have now been crafted already and see if we have everything in order to send off all those milestones. Alright, so we can now send everything into this one. Now before we launch this, there's something that we can do. We can go to the other one, select it here, and then we can add everything in there. We just need a couple more wires, so let's go ahead and grab those. And 
and add them in there. Now, what this will allow you to do is actually launch this one, and then you can go immediately into it, select the other one you've already pre-filled, and you'll be able to launch it too. And that way, you don't have to wait for the pod to come back before you can send the second one. So this could be useful if you have a lot of different milestones that you have all the stuff for to send at the same time. I don't know if it's an intended behavior or not, but at, right now we're able to do that. And that's it. So now we have finished our tier one milestones and we finished everything we wanted to do in this first episode. Now I'll be uploading this save onto my Patreon and I also want to thank all the Patreons that have supported me. This is what allows me to do series like this and keep going. I do appreciate every single one of you. And don't forget to like the video if you found it useful and subscribe and turn on those notifications if you want to be notified for future videos.